Welcome Unreal Developers, in this video I want to talk about why our crosshair on the bullet is not perfectly aligned and what possibilities we got to change that. Stay tuned. So first things first, I want to talk about the crosshair provided by Unreal. It is 16 by 16 pixels as you can see here, an even number. And if we are opening it and zoom in, you will find out one square is representing one pixel. So I copied that into GIMP to show you a little issue with the crosshair. Um, we all got even screen resolution, something like this. And it's the same issue with 16 by 16. If you got an even screen resolution and draw the line exactly in the middle, you will find out there is a middle is in between the pixels. Therefore, you can't really draw the crosshair there. And this is a common solution to use two pixels for the crosshair. This is what also Unreal DevKit is providing. So this is not really that important, but if you are going to design your own crosshair, it's nice to know. So the real issue I wanted to talk about, we got our shooter here and he has a gun. This line shall represent the vision, the crosshair, that's the side view, and this here is the top view, also with our line of vision, representing by the crosshair. And now we got our gun. Our gun shall hit the crosshair, but as you look at this, you will soon recognize it's not possible for the gun to hit all the locations. It only will hit at one point and it will be inaccurate on all the other points. So talking about the solutions for that issue, this is a very often accepted solution for that situation because you are just hip shooting and that's inaccurate. And if you really want high accuracy, please use your iron sight because then the vision is aligned with the barrel and you will really hit where the, the crosshair is, besides something like bullet drop. But if you want another solution, there are two solutions that came into my mind as well. You got a gun, and in this time you ain't got a crosshair, but your gun has a laser pointer. And if the obstacle is further away, you will see here the laser pointer. And if it is closer to you, you will see here the laser pointer. And obviously, as you can see, these are not the same height. So this would be one possibility to solve that issue. Another possibility would be to say, I am a really good shooter. I have a lot of practice. I see my crosshair, I see the target in the distance, and I know exactly how I have to rotate my gun to hit this point. And if the target is closer to me, I know exactly how I have to rotate the gun to hit this point. So these are the two possibilities we got. This is right now what we have installed. We just ignore the fact that the alignment is not perfect and we don't have an iron sight, but it is inaccurate. And the other solution would be something like a laser pointer, so only your gun is aiming and you are just shown where it will hit. And the other solution is you have some kind of aiming support and you will always hit in the crosshair. So this is the solution we are going to implement in our system. So let's switch to our first person character. This is a solution we got implemented right now and we won't change anything here. Instead of we're going a little bit down and we are typing right mouse button. So we will call a new event and this will be our right mouse button. And we are going to use a line trace by channel. We want to use our camera the view of our camera where we are looking at and therefore we need from our camera the location in the world and also the location the direction it is looking at so the direction of the red arrow so we got here our reference to the first person camera and we need the world location 
and we also want to have the forward vector. So these are the two things we need. We are going to start our line trace by channel and we need a starting point. As I said, the starting point is our camera, the current location. And we need the forward vector because we want to have it centered in our screen, but we want to have it further away. And so we are going to multiply it with an integer value. I choose something like 20,000. And a forward vector is just a direction, but we need to know where we are going from. So we need to have a start point and we need to add the start point. So we need to add vector and vector. We put in our start point, we put in the direction vector with a scalar and we put that in as the end. So when we are now inside our game, we can press the right mouse button. Okay, we also want to see it as a debug info and we set it to persistent so it will stay in our screen. So we shoot and you can see this point and if you move to the side, you see this is the line which was drawn at the beginning of our camera and this is the hit marker and the green line is obviously behind our hit. So we are going to break it down, the hit result, and we got that information. We are not going to use all of that, but this hit will tell us if we hit something. And if we hit something, we also got access to different values. So we need to use the location. The location is the location of the hit. So when we are inside our game, this point here will be the location. And our gun, as you can see, is below that line. And we want our gun exactly to aim at this point. We don't want to aim at the green end of the line. We want to aim at this point. And this is why we need to store it. So we are going to promote it to a local variable and we will call it hit location. So this is the first thing we need and going to do here. The second thing is, um, if we hit the target, then we need to get the location. Because if we did not hit the target, then we don't want our gun to point at a target because we ain't got a target. So what I'm talking about, um, if we ain't got a target, we have no hit, then we will need to set the gun to look at the end of the trace. So they will hit at the very end of the line. But if it hit at the point, we don't want to hit it at the end of the line, but at the hit point. So this is why we need to check if we hit something in the first line. We use a branch for that and connect it here. And now we need to get our source of the gun fire which is our sphere here. We are firing everything from the sphere. So I'm dragging it in to get a reference and we need to get the world location. So from here we want to know how we have to rotate it to look at this point, at the end point. So therefore we are going to find look at rotation. And we need this two times as I said. We need it one time when we hit a target and one time if we did not hit a target. And we are going also to promote this to a variable and let's call it body rotation because we are actually going to rotate our body and not the gun itself. So when we now hit the target, we want to get the location of the hit. So when it is true, we are going to this set because we want the location of the hit. And if it is false, if we did not hit something, we want to have the end of our trace line. So this is now the variable. And now we need to rotate our body to match that. Our body is this arms. And as you can see, it's the mesh 2P. We are tracking that in and we need to set the world rotation. So we set how it will be rotated inside the world 
and we go in here with both of these and we need the body rotation to rotate it into the right direction and when you are looking at the body rotation you will see it is already rotated so we also need to create a rotation here we need to adjust it to this value so we are going to get another variable it will be a rotator and we call it init body rotation so we are going to compile because otherwise we can't set the values we compile it now we can set the values and we get the values from the mesh 2p just copy x and paste it copy y and paste it and last but not least set So this is everything we have to do here. And now we need again to get our mesh and add the local rotation. So we're going to add this here and we are going to add our initial values. So now we can start to copy stuff from up here. We need to play our animation for the kickback of the gun. Paste it here. And people may not like how I am placing the notes, but in my opinion, this is now a nice set and I know which is together and it saves a little bit of place. I know the lines are not really nice, but this is more important to me. So anyway, um, now we set our kickback of the gun and now we are going to start the line trace of our gun. So line trace by channel again. And now we need our endpoint. We saved our endpoint earlier here. It's the hit location. So we get this value here as our endpoint. And as a start point we need our sphere again, but we also need almost all of this here, so we can copy that down, because we already got here our sphere location. So let's drop that here and track the world location of the sphere up to the start point. And we also want to see our line. So next thing is to create a projectile and we can also copy down the sound generation. So place it here. We just need to copy that here and drag in the transform. So now we're going to play again. Press the right mouse button. As you can see now we got two lines the one line above is a little bit shorter because the display is further away than the gun is. And as you can see, they will hit at one point. And if you're shooting into the infinity, they almost... Okay, here is an issue. So let's look at it. Well, obviously the issue is our hit location. Because our hit location... I drag this line into the branch because our hit location will be set depending on the branch too. So if we are hitting it, we are going to set here 1. We take here the location, we also need to take that location for the hit marker and the same is for this here. We also need to set it at the end trace value. So now this should fix everything. So now you can see they are still going along and this will be very long but we might be able to reduce the line here. Just change it to something like 300. Now it should hit at some point here. Here you can see so now it is working fine. We are setting the value again as we had in front of. 
So, and this is almost it. When we are now shooting with the left mouse button, you can see the bullet is still dropping a little bit too low. And if we are shooting with the right mouse button, you can see it is hitting perfectly. So, this is almost everything, but we got two issues. First thing is, if we are standing very close and shooting, nothing is happening. This was the left mouse button. And if you are using the right mouse button, you see that the gun will go off. So, there's two things we need to fix. Um, first of all is, if you are going to spawn our projectile, we want it always to spawn in both cases. So now it will work. And we need to fix this here. Why is this issue happening? Because we are trying to aim at the crosshair. And look at the gun very close to the edge. You will see that this will change the offset of the gun when we are going close to an item. So it's just our opinion how far we want to go there till we say it does not look good. And therefore we are going to make here print string and we are putting in our distance. So now when we are shooting you can see the distance to our hit point. And now we just go to our target and we shoot and at some point we say this does not look good. So I think something like 200 should be fine. So we are going to remove this again and we are going to set a new condition, a new branch. Our input is if the distance is greater than 200. We're going back here. If the distance is greater, so we can turn the gun in and it does not look ridiculous, then we are going to rotate the gun. But if we can't rotate the gun and it would look stupid, we won't rotate the gun, so we will aim at the end of the trace. So that's everything, and now if we're going here, you will see that the gun will get closer to you again, but at some point we will reset and the gun is like we had it before. So this is everything, we now set up the line tracing and we will hit all the time perfectly. So thank you for watching. Subscribe. Like the video. Thank you.